Hi all, today's module it is covers about the hormone controls and reflux action. To introduce the topic on the title, the milk removal from the breast is accomplished by the contraction of two myoepithelial cells whose processes from the basket like network around the alveoli where milk is stored and this is the network around the alveoli is concerned with sucking by the infant and when this infant is suckled up different impulses from the sensory stimulation of nerve terminals in the arolus travels to the central nervous system where they promote the release of oxytocin from the posterior pituitary. In a woman oxytocin releases is often associated in such stimuli as the sight or sound or even throughout the infant indicating a large cerebral component in this neuroendocrine reflux. The oxytocin is carried through the bloodstream to the mammary gland where it is interacts a specific receptors on myoepithelial cells. On initiating their contraction an epithelial or expelling milk from the alveoli into the duct and sub aerolar tissues. The passage of milk through ducts is facilitated by longitudinally arranged myoepithelial cell processes whose contraction shortens and widens the duct, allowing the free flow of milk to the nipple. The process by which milk is forcibly moved out of the alveoli is called milk ejection or lay down and it is essential in to milk removal from the lactating breast. And after completing this module, you will be able to explain the hormones which are involved in the milk secretion and the role of hormones in reflux action. And you will be able to learn the factors affecting breast development and milk secretion and the benefits of breast milk over cow's milk or other milks. And now we will move on to the, we will discuss about the hormones that are contributing to the breast development and lactation. The table clearly says about the hormone activity in relation to the lactation, the role of hormones in lactation and the stage, stages of lactation in each hormone. For example, estrogen, it plays a role in ductal growth and the stage of lactation is mammary gland differentiation with menstruation. The hormone progesterone, it takes place in alveolar development and after onset of menses during pregnancy. Hormone that is human growth hormone or HGH, it takes place in the development of terminal in bud and it is developed in mammary gland during the mammary gland development. The hormone human placental lactogen that is HPL, it takes place in the alveolar development. The hormone prolactin takes place in alveolar development and milk production and it develops during pregnancy and breastfeeding, especially the third trimester of uh, the pregnancy to weaning. And the hormone oxytocin, it takes place in lay down activity and it develops from the onset of milk secretion to the weaning. And the figure clearly says about how the hormone controls on lactation. When an infant nurses from the mother, the infant suckling stimulates the nipple which sends a nerve signals to the hypothalamus. In turn, the hypothalamus signals the pituitary gland to release hormones that stimulate milk pr production and release. And this is how the suction and secretion is re related. From the 24th week of pregnancy, that is the second and third trimester, a woman's body produces hormones that stim stimulates the growth of the milk duct system in the breast. And now we are going to discuss about the role of each hormones in detail. And sucking by infants initiates hormonal changes that leads to the milk production and lay down reflux which releases milks. This process is clearly explained in the figure that is when the infant started sucking it stimulates the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus again signals to the pituitary to release the hormones oxytocin and oxytocin from the posterior pituitary is released which causes the release of milk from alveoli which facilitates uterus to return to the normal size. Hence, breastfeeding 
is helpful for the mother to make the uterus to return into normal size. And the figure ex clearly explains about the process of stimulation of milk production and now we will discuss each hormones in detail, how they take place, what is the role of the hormones in milk secretion on reflex action. First comes about the progesterone. Progesterone influences the growth in size of alveoli and lobes. High levels of progesterone inhibit the lactation before birth and progesterone levels drop after birth. Triggers the progesterone triggers the onset of milk production. This is how the progesterone takes place in reflex action. And the second hormone what we are going to deal is about estrogen. Estrogen stimulates the milk duct system to grow and differentiate. Like progesterone, even estrogen, the high levels of estrogen also inhibit lactation. And estrogen levels also drop at delivery and remain low for the sev first several months of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding mothers should avoid estrogen based birth control methods as a spike in estrogen levels may reduce the mother's supply. So, so the mother who is breastfeeding, they should avoid the birth control methods which contains estrogen. Next we will discuss on the hormone prolactin. Prolactin contributes to the increased growth and differentiation of alveoli and also influences the differentiation of ductal structures. High levels of prolactin during pregnancy and breastfeeding of, uh, also increases insulin resistance and increased growth factor that is IGF-1 it levels modify lipid metabolism in preparation for breastfeeding. During lactation, prolactin is the main factor maintaining tight injections in the ductal epithelium and regulating milk production through, through osmotic balance. And the prolactin levels may vary according to several factors. Those are first one levels of prolactin are higher at night. Prolactin levels or at higher, uh, they are highest until the two months of postpartum and they are also higher in the, uh, in the months where the breastfeeding after the period and once mom means the levels drops down. When they initially start, it becomes higher and they started weaning, it goes down and prolactin levels increases if more milk is removed from the breast. That is women who smoke have a lower prolactin level and stress and anxiety levels are inclined to delay the ovulation. Second, we are going to discuss on the uh, oxytocin hormone. Oxytocin, the functions of lactation hormone oxytocin are many that is which includes that it causes a muscle contraction which cause the muscles to the uterus or muscles of the uterus to contract in labor. Oxytocin also helps the uterus to return in its normal size of the pregnancy. Oxytocin is released when the nipples are stimulated and it, is just, it causes the alveoli to contract which squeezes the milk out into the duct system. This is called the letdown. This process is called the letdown. A letdown may happen a few minutes or few times while breastfeeding. And oxytocin has a calming effect. Women who breastfeed have a low levels of stress hormone and they non breastfeeding ones. Oxytocin contracts the smooth muscle of uterus during, after, during and after birth. After birth, oxytocin contracts the smooth muscle layer of band like a cell surrounding the alveoli to squeeze the newly produced milk into the duct system. And oxytocin is necessary for the milk ejection reflex or letdown which is occurring. And we are going to move on to the next heading that is conditioned reflex during sucking. How the conditioned reflex taken place during sucking. Ascending impulses from the nipple and areola which initiates the paraventricular and supra or supra optic nucleoli of the hypothalamus. This in turn stimulates oxytocin from the posterior pituitary which produces contraction of pen, the myoepithelial cells of the alveoli and the ducts containing milk that is milk ejection or milk 
the down reflex. Milk is forced down into the ampulla of lactiferous duct where form can it uh, where from it can be expressed by the mother or sucked by the baby. This occurs between uh, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Uh, next uh, hormone is growth hormone GH. It is structurally very similar to prolactin activities and it contributes to the galactoleptic uh, galactopoietic functions. The next hormone is adrenocorticotrophic hormone that is ACTH and glucocorticoids. These have an important lactation functions including the uh, several uh, animal species. ACTH is thought to contribute as it is structurally similar, similar to that of prolactin. Glucocorticoids, they play a complex regulating role in the maintenance of tight junction. And the next hormone is about thyroid stimulating hormone TSH. This is a very important galactopoietic hormone whose levels are naturally increased during pregnancy. The another hormone involved in reflux action is human placental lactogen that is HPL. From the second month of pregnancy, the placenta releases this hormone and it is in larger quantities. This hormone appears to be instrumental in breast, nipple and areola growth before birth. The next hormone is about the luteinizing hormone or LH. By the fifth or sixth month of pregnancy, the breasts are ready to produce milk and it is also possible to induce lactation without pregnancy by this hormone, luteinizing hormone. And the next hormone, uh, so far we have clear, we have discussed about various hormones which are involved in reflux action. Now we will move on to the role of cholesterol in human milk or what is the cholesterol and what is the benefits of cholesterol in breast milk. Cholesterol is the first milk a breast baby receives. It contains higher amount of white blood cells and antibodies that mature milk than the mature milk and is especially high in immunoglobulin A, IgA, which coats the lining of baby's immature immune systems which helps to prevent pathogens from the baby's invading system and, and this IgA, secretory IgA helps prevent food allergies and over the first two weeks after birth, cholesterol production slowly gives way to mature breast milk and cholesterol is a thick yellow fluid which is secreted immediately after labor and it is produced during lactogenesis. Lacto means milk genesis milk secretion the process of milk secretion is synthesis is known as lactogenesis lactogenesis 2 that is 2 to, two to 3 days of after birth it is produced and it provides about 58 to 70 calories per 100 ml and it is high in protein electrolytes sodium potassium chloride and vitamin a these are the uh, nutrients which are present maximum in cholesterol and cholesterol is low in fat and carbohydrate and this is it has a lactobacillus bifidus factor and the table clearly indicates the composition of cholesterol. The composition of cholesterol is given in the table. What are the nutrients that are present in the cholesterol? That is about energy is about 58 calories, kilocalories. The fat content is about 2.9 grams whereas calcium is about 31 milligrams, phosphorus is about 14 milligrams and iron and protein is about 0 0.09 milligrams and 2.7 milligrams respectively. The content of lactose in breast milk is about 5.3 grams. The content of carotene is about 186 international units and vitamin A is about 296 international units. In case of protein, the ratio between casein and lactalbumin is very important. In breast milk, the ratio of casein and lactalbumin is 40 is to 60, whereas it is 80 is to 20 in cow's milk and as well as buffalo's milk. The amino acids, the building blocks of protein, contain the breast milk is low in phenylalanine and methionine, but it is high in taurine and cysteine. The amino acid which is uh, taurine and cysteine content is higher in breast milk 
and the total protein is about 0.7 to 0.9 grams per 100 ml of breast milk versus 3.5 gram in 100 ml of cow's milk. When coming to the fat, the fat content is higher in breast milk overall, especially in the breast milk has more cholesterol which is uh, responsible for the central nervous system myelin cyst, enzymes and linoleic acid. The content of linoleic acid is high in breast milk which is essential fatty acid and the carnitine which is important for the fat metabolism is higher in breast milk and lipase enzyme which aids the digestion of fats is present in breast milk naturally. And when talking about the minerals, generally lower in present milk, that is the breast milk, the mineral content is very low in breast milk when compared to cow's milk and bu buffalo's milk and six times more phosphorus, four times more calcium and three times more total ash which is present in cow's milk and this is very very low in breast milk and the renal solute load is uh, higher in breast milk and however bioavailability of some minerals are higher in breast milk such as iron and the however however the breast milk is low in iron the infant needs a supplementary foods for iron uh, needs and vitamins when talking about the vitamin the variable in breast milk depending on the diet and drug use the content or the presence of vitamins is based on the mother's diet as well as the mother's medication vitamin e is higher in breast milk than cow's milk and buffalo's milk there are many anti-infectious factors present in breast milk those are bifidus factor such as lactobifidus which kills the entropathogenic organisms by the production of lactic and acetic acid and apart from this factor breast milk contains immunoglobulins A, M, E, D and G which fights against the bacteria and virus. Lactoferrin is one of the immunoglobulin which binds the iron in bacteria needs and lysozymes and lactoferoxidase are present in breast milk and interferon is one of the component which present in uh, breast milk which inhibits the viral replication in the infant. Now we will move on to the benefits of breast milk over cow's milk and buffalo's milk. How breast milk is better than cow's milk and buffalo's milk. The table clearly shows the nutrients present in cow's milk, buffalo's milk and breast milk and these are compared. For example, the energy content of cow's milk is about 67 calories where it is lower in breast milk that is 65 calories and it is very high in buffalo's milk that is 117 calories. The content of protein is very low when compared to buffalo's and cow's milk that is the amount of protein present in breast milk is only 1.1 grams where it is 3.2 grams in cow's milk and 4.3 grams in buffalo's milk. The amount of carbohydrates is more when compared to cow's milk and buffalo's milk that is the amount of carbohydrate is 7.4 grams in breast milk and it is 4.4 and 5 in cow's milk and buffalo's milk respectively. The amount of fat is minimum in breast milk where it is present only 3.4 grams where it is maximum in buffalo's milk that is 6.5 grams and 4.1 gram in cow's milk. The amount of calcium is very very low as we discussed earlier. The amount of calcium is 28 milligrams in breast milk and in, it is higher in cow's milk that is 120 milligrams and very high in buffalo's milk that is 210 milligrams. And phosphorus is very low similar to that of calcium that is the amount of phosphorus in breast milk is only 11 milligrams and it is 90 in cow's milk and it is 130 milligrams in buffalo's milk. Moreover, comparative to breast milk and cow's milk, the buffalo's milk present a nutrient dense but it is not recommended since overdosage may lead to the uh, poisoning. And iron is not present in or very very less amount of iron is present in breast milk hence it should be supplied from the other foods and it should be uh, like uh, supplementary foods after 6 months but the bu buffalo milk and cow's milk provides enough quantity of iron that is 
90 milligrams and 130 milligrams respectively. The carotene contents is comparatively okay in breast milk that is 137 micrograms and cow's milk provides 174 micrograms whereas the carotene content is very high in buffalo's milk that is 160 micrograms. The thiamine and riboflavin uh, uh, percentages or the content of thiamine and riboflavin are similar to that of cow's milk and buffalo's milk and vitamin C is maximum or higher in breast milk when compared to cow's milk and buffalo's milk. The vitamin C content is about 3 milligrams in breast milk and whereas it is 2 and 1 in cow's milk and buffalo's milk respectively. The casinogen and uh, lactalbumin ratios are similar to uh, similar when compared to breast milk and cow's milk and buffalo's milk and so far we have seen the comparison chart between cow's milk and breast milk and now we will look into the factors that affects the quantity as well as the quality of breast milk the factors which affect the volume and the composition of breast milk first comes the maternal nutritional status it affects the volume of volume as well as the quality of breast milk fat and energy concentration especially in milk are significantly related to the fat stores in maternal period parity that is it matters parity matters on the volume and output of the breast milk that is milk of primary parry has a higher fat concentration than that of multi parry supplementary feeding has a significant they ha they have no significant effect on the production of milk and infant demand it matters it makes the maximum that is infant demand the frequency of milk removal is an important determinant of volume of milk secreted sucking stimulates the release of hormones that stimulates milk production frequent feeding removes the locally active inhibitors and undernourishment the undernourished mother produces less quantity and as well as the uh, less quantity but the same quality of milk and selenium and iodine and B vitamins content of milk is dependent on mother's diet hence the mother should take a diet which is rich in selenium iodine and B vitamins but lactose protein calcium iron copper and fluorine content of milk is not dependent on the mother's diet and lactational capacity is a function of genetic heritage maternal physical activity the thermic effect of food and maternal and infant illness may also affect the amount and content of milk. Milk production may also be affected by the inadequate fluid intake hence the mother, the lactating mother should take enough quantity of milk to, in, to enhance the milk secretion. And so far we have discussed about the hormonal activity on reflux, the reflux index and we have seen about different kinds of hormones, what are the hormones which are involved in the milk production and the composition of cholesterol what is cholesterol and the components of the breast milk and we have just compared the breast milk with the cow's milk and we have seen the benefits of breast milk over cow's milk and uh, and so on and we have uh, covered we have seen so far we have discussed about the benefits of breast milk the mother should be motivated to breastfeed exclusively until the age of six months for her baby and it is recommended by WHO and CDC World Health Organization and Center for Disease Control and Prevention and this is mandatory it is the responsibility of the mother and the family member to provide a nutritious diet to throughout the maternal age as well as the after uh, delivery during the lactation time the mother should take a diet which are rich in nutrition that is nutritious diet will help the mother to provide enough quantity of milk and the major thing they have to take care is the baby should suck an, uh, enough flea that is the sucking process may induces or increases the secretion of milk the, the, they are interrelated with each other sucking more sucking of the from the uh, infants makes the mother to release more milk the secretion of milk will be maximum and these points has to be taken care in mind and it can be promoted the exclusive breastfeeding can be promoted in the mother
Thank you.